Hello, hello, and happy Thursday. Wow, I cannot believe how fast this week is going. Again, I, I say that all the time that I feel like life is flashing by so fast, but it is. It truly is flashing by so quickly, and it's almost like I feel sometimes like I cannot keep up with it. Like There's just so much going on and so much to do and so many opportunities and so many exciting things. And and so, you know, it's a, it's a really great thing, but it's also a pretty scary thing, right? Um, when you feel like your life is flashing by so quickly. So today I wanted to talk to you about staying in your lane and why it's a good thing. Um, but before I get started, I just wanted to talk to you again about my VIP membership group um, that I've launched this week. It's called Manage Your Triggers. The open enrollment is only for this first week of September, so through September 1st through September 7th. So this Saturday at midnight, the doors are going to close, and then uh, they're not going to be open again until the first week of October. And the reason why is just so that I can truly be focused and value-driven for those of you who decided to take that leap of faith and decided that now is the time for you to take back control of your life and start managing your emotions so that you can live a more clear, focused, and happier life, right? You don't want your, your emotions managing you. Now, if you're on the fence about joining and you're not quite sure, maybe what you're doing is you're playing it safe. You know, you think, oh, well, you, you know, I react, I respond totally, uh, whatever, however way it happens, but I know that that whole feeling, that whole scenario will typically dissipate after a while and, I'll, and life will go back to normal. And I'm just willing to keep going on and taking my chances that the next time I get triggered by something similar that I won't react and respond the same way. You know, I get that. Or maybe while well, you're thinking, well, I'm striving for something and I know if I want to level up, I've got to do all that work. And, and what if it doesn't work out? And what if I get rejected? Or simply life keeps going on the same way. And I understand that as well, for sure. Or maybe you're thinking like your mom and you're saying, well, all moms go through this, right? This is just a way of life. You know, kids are kids. You know, triggers happen to everybody, and it's just a fact of life. There's no way around it. You're not going to be any different than anyone else. There's no way that you cannot be triggered. It's just what's going to happen. The key is it's how you react and respond, which is what is going to make you different than everyone else. It's how your emotions take over, and are they taking and, – and, are you allowing them to take over and running the show? Or are you actually self-aware and you're actually in control of your emotions and you're running the show? And if you are that way, congratulations. But if you're not, that's what this VIP group is all about. It's about helping, you know, teaching you to learn about how you are being triggered and what your triggers are so that you can learn to spot them and when you spot your triggers, because you're becoming self-aware of them, you'll know that you're being triggered and you won't allow your emotions to run amok, to run wild, and for your emotions to take control and make you do and say things that you don't really want to say or do because once it's out there, it's out there and it can't be taken back and you know feelings can get hurt. You know, there's things that you can say that really can just be very hurtful or things that you can do that can undermine the success of the goals that you're trying to achieve. So that's why this group is so important. It's to help you to learn to spot your triggers so that you can learn to manage your emotions rather than the other way around so that you can really truly get back to what's important, which is running your life in a more effective and efficient way, living it the way that you want to live it, loving your life and living a life that you love. And that's what this group is all about. So I've put the link in the title above. Um, again, I will post it in the notes below because I'd love to get to, to, to get you on there and, and be able to help you learn to spot your triggers so you can manage your emotions and not the other way around. Okay, so now that I've told you what the group's about, I'm going to get right back to today's topic, which is staying in your lane. It is a good thing, right? Because we all have things that we want to do with our life. There are dreams we have, aspirations. We've got a vision for our life. We want it to become our reality. And... A lot of the time, there's just all this other stuff that's swirling around that's going on. You know, oh, there's a shiny penny over there. Oh, there's a shiny penny over there, right? And so you can get distracted really, really quickly. But <clears throat> staying in your lane is a good thing because it allows you to focus on you. So number one, do what works for you. You know, like, don't worry about, you know, what you're doing. Like, don't worry about there's all this other stuff going on, like all the shiny pennies that you keep seeing and you want to pick up. Do what works for you. 
Number two, don't worry about what everyone else is doing because if you're focused on everyone else and what they're doing, you're not focused on what? Yourself. You're not focused on what you could be doing to get to where you want to be, to get your life in the shape that you want it to be, to have those visions for your life become your reality. You're not working on it because you're worried about what everyone else is doing. Number three, don't worry about what everyone else expects you to do. Yes, you know what? Family has expectations on you. Your significant other has expectations of you. Your children, if you have children, have expectations of you. Don't worry about what everyone else expects you to do. Do what you want to do. Now, I'm not saying this to be to tell you to go out there and just like do things just for you and then it, and you know to hell with everyone else. Like you're not going to care about what you do because what we do in life obviously affects other people. What I'm seeing is if you have something that you truly are striving for and it doesn't line up with what everyone else is expecting you to do, don't worry about that. That's It's not their journey. It's your journey. Good morning. Thank you for watching. It's not their journey. It's your journey, right? This is what you want. So number four, find your passion. So say there's something in life that you want to do. I know that for me, I wanted something else in my life. And this was 11 years ago that I had thought about this. So now I'm 56 years old, to be transparent. And at 45, I decided, you know what, I wanted something else different for my life. But I couldn't, I couldn't think about that. I couldn't think. I was like so caught up in everything that was going on in my life, working this really crazy, busy, demanding corporate job. It was taking a lot of my time. In fact, I really didn't have much of a life. At that point, I was thinking, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be something out there for me. But you know what? I was so in it that I couldn't actually think about anything. I was letting my emotions manage me, manage my life, dr driving me to doing the things that I was doing. And so I couldn't even get out of that hamster, off that hamster wheel that I was on. That's why this group that I've been talking to you about is so important. It's if you're right now thinking there's got to be more to life than what I'm doing right now, um, or maybe I'm just trying to, I want to have other things for my life, but I can't think, it's because you're allowing your emotions to drive your life. You're allowing your emotions to be in the driver's seat instead of you. And that's why this group is really super important. So getting back to this, finding your passion, well, yes, so 11 years, uh, sorry, 10 years go by. And so what happens? I'm still on that hamster wheel. <laughs> Not a happy camper, I'll tell you that right now. I don't want to look back another 10 years and have that same feeling. So I found ways to actually, what did I need to do? Well, guess what? Number one thing was I realized, what did I do in my 20s? What was I so good at in my 20s that I could bring to my life now in my, you know, my mid-50s? And one of the things I realized was when I was in my 20s, I went after whatever I wanted and typically would get it because I was confident. I was confident in my abilities that I would be able to achieve that which I was going after, the goals that I was setting for myself. And somewhere along the way, in my 30s, I was still going after what I wanted, but then I started becoming complacent and allowing myself to just, you know, accept whatever I got. Even though I went after certain things and sometimes I would get them, the things that I didn't get and I would get something else, I would just become accepting of it. And then into my 40s, then I realized, oh my gosh, something's got to change, right? So now here I'm in my mid-50s. And as I was saying, like, I had to figure something out. And that's why I say, find your passion. I found my passion, which is helping you. Helping other people learn to manage those emotions so that their emotions aren't driving their life so that they can actually do the things that they want to do. So that when they get triggered, they're not undermining their successes. They're not saying or doing things that um, will make them feel regret and shame afterwards, right? You don't want that. So again, the, number four, find your passion. But the number five, really super important, if you're going to do something and you find your passion, know your why. Why are you going to do this? Why are you doing this? What impact is it having on your life? What impact will it have on others if you are in the service-based 
uh, field, just like I am. I'm service-based. I want to help you. So knowing my why, knowing my why is number one, part of my why is what I went through for about 10 years span of knowing that there was something more for me in my life, but I allowed a decade to go by. Now I could regret that and just focus on regret, but I'm not going to. I don't want you to regret it either. So knowing my why was partly my why was because I knew what I went through. I knew that I needed something and I wanted something different for my life. And when I finally woke up and started and realizing what it was, what my passion was, I knew that my why was so much bigger than me, that I wanted to share this with others. Because I know that there's a lot of people out there. I know that those of you watching, you might have a bigger passion for your life. You might have dreams and goals that you know that you would love to have. Or maybe you're not even sure what your passion is because you're in it so deeply into a busy life that you have no time to even think and that your emotions are managing you. So you don't even have time to find your passion, let alone even to know what your why is. I want to help you with that. That's why, again, this, this group is so important. It will help you to learn to spot your triggers, manage your emotions so that you can look at your things that you want to do, finding your passion, and then realizing your why. And last but not least, number six, then you can just go for it. And just going for it, yes, you're going to have to make sure that you do the work which is you're going to have to research whatever it is that you're trying to do. You're going to have to look to others, you know, people that you admire, people who have succeeded in certain things. Maybe you need to ask them, how are you, how are you succeeding at what you're doing? And it might not even be the same field that you want to be in. But if they're succeeding, someone that you know, someone you look up to, a mentor, anyone that you look up to, someone that you look up to, that you admire for what they're doing with their life, and they're succeeding then you want to look to what they're doing to see maybe i can incorporate some of the things that they're doing into my life so that i can really start leveling up to where i want to be but it all starts with us first we need to learn to manage those emotions because your emotions can derail you period that's it they can take you down a road you don't even want to go down, one that wasn't even there yesterday and it's here today and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And I had my vision over here and now I'm being taken way over on this side. I'm not interested in going that way. I want to continue on the path that I set for myself. But how do I do that? So again, it, it comes back to you and your emotions because our emotions can get us into trouble. Our emotions can lead us down a road that we don't want to go. Our emotions can have us saying things and doing things we don't want to say or do. And our emotions can derail anything that we, we it, it can make us self-sabotage our own successes. The things that we're looking forward to doing, you know, the things that we want to do with our lives. Even, and then that can be in anything. It can be with your relationships. It can be in your, if you want to start a business, it could be in the business, that the, the job that you're currently in, that you're working at. Maybe you love your job, but there's just things, aspects about it. And it's not really the job. It's just certain things trigger you and you're, you're responding a certain way. And so how do you become self-aware of that so that you don't allow that to interfere with how you're doing at work and you're trying to level up and maybe get promoted or maybe starting that business of yours and trying to get that business going but your emotions get the best of you and it derails you and takes you off track. Or maybe you already have a, a business and you're trying to grow it and you're thinking, I can't even think about how to grow this because I keep all these things keep happening and, I, and you keep responding certain ways and your emotions are take, getting the best of you. And so you're not even really focusing on your business and how to get that, grow that business to where you see it, the vision. I mean, you started that business for a reason, right? You wanted to level it up as well, but how do you get there? And 
maybe you don't even know what your passion is, but right now you can't even think what your passion is because you're in such a crazy life right now and your emotions are crazy right now because they get the best of you. Then I get that. So again, I come back to saying to you, if you are on the fence about joining and you're not quite sure, maybe it is because you're, you're playing it safe and you're afraid, your fear of failure, the only way you fail is if you give up on you. That's it. Because failure really is just another way of looking at something that didn't work this way. Why didn't it work? Why didn't it work? What can I do to make it better? All right, back to the drawing board. Okay, let's try it this way. It's not a failure. It's just a lesson learned. Okay, so this is what I really, really am trying to explain to you and let you know that it's all about you. Doing what works for you by staying in your lane. Don't worry what everyone else is doing. Stay in your lane. Don't worry what everyone else expects you to do. Stay in your lane. Do you. Find your passion. And if you're not able to find your passion, maybe, again, it's coming back to learning to manage your emotions. Know your why once you have your passion, once you know what it is that you want to do. And again, finding your passion could still be within the business that you already have. Rekindling that passion that you had from the beginning. Reworking and knowing and remembering your why. And then just going for it. So I hope this was helpful for you today. Thank you so much for those of you who have joined in live and for those of you who are watching this back. Um, again, as I said, I have this amazing, amazing uh, group called Manage Your Triggers. It is, uh, the open enrollment is now for this week only, the first week of uh, September, September 1st to September 7th at midnight on Saturday. I'm closing the doors until next month, the first week, it's just so that I can focus totally on those of you who've taken the leap, who've decided today is the day. So the link is in the, the title, and I'll put it again in the notes. I really want you to ask yourself, if I'm, if I'm ready, what's holding me back? Am I ready to take control of my life? And if I'm ready to take control of my life, again, what's holding me back from joining? You get a coach-like experience without the coach-like cost. So think about it. I hope that uh, this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video and help me help others. My name is Leslie Gaudet, and I am an empowerment coach. I help my clients learn to spot their triggers so that they can manage their emotions and get back to what's really important, which is pursuing their dreams and aspirations and turning their visions for their lives into their realities. I hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.